Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. I'm excited to continue looking at the book of 1 Samuel with us. Uh, We're going to be in chapter 28 if you want to follow along or if you want to read uh, the chapter in its entirety after this video, I encourage you to do that. Uh, It's a long narrative, and so there's going to be some things that we have to just skip over in this video and and look at some high points. So if you want to read it in its entirety, I encourage you to do that. And unfortunately, what we see here in the, the life of Saul is just the fact that the further we get from God, the more desperate we become. And we had seen the progression of Saul continuing to rebel against God and wander away from the instructions that God had given him, some very blatant and and rebellious against God. And it gets to the point where now it is at nearly the end of both Saul's kingship and life. And Uh, And things have gotten pretty desperate for him. In fact, uh, he has lost Samuel, the the prophet and representative of God in his life, and and he is needing to go to war, and he's worried. Because normally he would go to Samuel, and Samuel would bring a word from the Lord on what they should know and, and instructions. And that's not the case this time. So let's read a few verses at the beginning and set the the stage for this. Verse 4 says, The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem, and Saul gathered all of Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the enemy of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. And Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium. They may go to her, inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a medium at Endor. And so Saul disguised himself and put on other garments and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Divine for me a spirit and bring up for me whoever I shall name to you. Now this was specifically prohibited in the instructions and commands that they had, mediums and necromancers. It actually said in the verses previous that Saul had followed God's instruction and cast them out of the nation. They were not to be interacted with under any circumstances by God's people. And here the king of God's people gets silence when he inquires of God. And instead of wondering, why am I getting silence? He goes, well, fine, I'm going to get the answer I want my own way. And he goes to this, this medium at Endor and he requests her to summon the spirit of Samuel. And so if we skip down to verse 16, we see that that happens. And Saul asks for some instructions and guidance. And he gets this in return from the spirit of Samuel. Verse 16, and Samuel said, Why then do you ask me since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? Interesting phrasing there. The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out from your hand and given it to your neighbor David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. We saw that uh, a few chapters previous. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines. And catch this, he says, tomorrow you and your son shall be with me, as in you're not going to be alive tomorrow. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hands of the Philistines. Now, Saul laments and he's distraught and he's concerned here. But what's so interesting is is just the sequence of events. And I want to chase a little rabbit real quick on this. Uh, I don't believe that that this experience that Saul has with the medium and and the the conversation he has through her with the, the spirit of Samuel is normative. I don't think this is something we go, oh yeah, this is normal. We can do this as well. Um, I know there's a lot that claim mediums and, and it's still a thing that exists in our world. And, and I think that what we saw earlier on in this chapter, that these are to be people that the people of God don't even interact with and don't, don't uh, dabble in and, and pursue this. And I don't think that the experience that Saul had here is something we go, oh, that's an option available for us if we want to spoke, speak to the ones that have died and our loved ones that have gone uh, away. But I think that God worked supernaturally to bring a final word of judgment to Saul. As a significant leader of his people, as a rebellious leader, he met him where he was at in his sin and rebellion and said, I need you to understand the gravity of your sins. And so I'm going to speak through this medium here. And 
And as we look at, at all of this in the life of Saul, we have to pause and just go, how did he get here? After all, earlier on in the book of 1 Samuel, he's the one that God picks to be king. Like the God of the universe said, yes, you are the one to be king because I see potential, I see the right attributes, I see the right heart and desire to serve me and serve my people. And this is how it ends. Now, and later on in chapter 31, we're going to see actually how it ends and, and the, the official end to his reign. But before that, we're here with him dabbling in the occult and, and evil spirits and all of this nasty activity as he gets nothing back from his pleas and requests to God because he had rebelled against him. And I think as we look at the, the entirety of his story, the reasons he gets here are twofold. And the first is that because Saul wanted to do what he wanted to do more than what God had asked him to do. Over and over again, through his leadership, through his decision-making, through his life, Saul chose to do what felt right to him instead of what God had commanded him to do. And now this is the downfall of that. And, and for us, every time we decide to take matters into our own hands, to be the Lord of our own life and usurp the leadership of God, our life is never blessed and never prospers. But more than that, we also see through this that it seems like Saul was more focused on what he could get from God than what he could do to serve the Lord of the universe. From his, uh, his decision to offer the sacrifice himself instead of waiting for Samuel to making a decision to spare the, the, uh, the things from Amalek instead of complete destruction as he was commanded, he's taking matters into his own hands instead of petitioning and really working to get right before Lord to get instructions in this. He wants to do it his way and, and, and go to the medium and the necromancers because he was more concerned about what God could provide in terms of perks and benefits for him to go into battle and to be a leader and to have power and authority than he was being a servant of the Most High. And I wonder if sometimes we do that too. Where we go, man, if I'm just around this Jesus stuff, everything gets better, my relationships are better, I'm full of joy and encouragement and hope, and I get this heaven promise, I got all those perks. And if we ever think that following God is about the perks that we get from it, more than it's about our ability to have relationship and communion and, and, and a connection with the God of the universe, then we have mixed everything up. And so today, I don't know where you find yourself, but I it would encourage you to just ask, are you on the path of Saul? Are you on the path of saying, I want to do what's right in my own eyes. I want to do things my way. I don't care about God's commands because they're just guidelines and suggestions. Are you more worried about the perks and the benefits and the help that God wants to give you than you are living your life to submit and serve him and surrender all of your life to say, Lord, you are the king of everything. I'm just here to serve you. Because if we're on that path, we see where this path takes us. It's a path of desperation and destruction. But when we live our life saying, God, you are king, you are the leader of everything, and I exist just to serve and follow you, our life will be abundantly blessed. But we never get blessing by pursuing blessing, only by pursuing Christ and surrendering our life to him. So I hope that you do that. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.